Hey Aussie gamers and honorary Aussie gamers from around the world, welcome to episode 77. Today is Wednesday the 13th of May 2015 and you're listening to the Aussie Gamers Express podcast, the podcast that must paint red doors black. I am your host Luke One and joining me as usual is our good friend Thorncliff. How are you mate? I am very well. Wonderful and also joining us this week is our very good friend Red. Hey man, how are we? Very good mate. Keep your voice down, you're too noisy. Before we start the show, here is this week's show in preview. First we'll have Game Talk, and then in the news we'll cover Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Devil May Cry release date, new LEGO Dimensions packs, more Guitar Hero live artists and songs, The Division Delay, Trouser Snakes, The Witcher 3 on Xbox One, and Goat Z. After that we'll do What's That Sound, Not So Frequently Asked Questions, Shout, and then we'll bring the show home for another week. So... First of all, Red, tell us all about your week. Oh, it doesn't consist of too much, really. I've spent a fair whack of time on the multiplayer of Battlefield. I'm very much enjoying that still. Other than the accomplishment of uh, infection zombies on Call of Duty, the latest uh, zombie map path from the Ascendance map pack, um, we completed the Easter egg in just under 50 minutes. So that was pretty cool. And um, Wheaty thought it was a good idea to uh, grab me a copy of The Witcher 2 on the, on the PC, on Steam, because it's pretty cheap at the moment. The whole lot's pretty cheap at the moment, actually. And um, so we've found a way to hook up the DualShock 4, but there was it's probably like half half a second to three quarters of a, of a second of lag. Oh. So it kind of shot it in the foot for me, so I'm going to look into getting a... 360 controller, just the way you guys do it. But um, one one game it did work, the PS4 or the DualShock 4 did work with, was Fallout New Vegas. So that was dangerous. So I'll probably put more time into that than nearly all the PlayStation games, really. And last but not least, uh, Air Mac Arena. Air Mech Arena. Air Mech Arena. Air Mech Arena. Yeah. Air Mech Arena. I was only last night, I was saying oh, I could shell a few dollars into this and give some money back because obviously it's a free-to-play title. But it fizzes. You can't find a game online. I know. That's what we were talking about. They were like, yeah, this game deserves our money. We'll be happy to buy some cool stuff on this and play. And then when we tried to do a, an online match, it just searched and searched and searched. Like, mm, yeah, maybe I'll keep my money. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I would really enjoy dominating people with an Aussie gamers clan, you, me, whoever else wanted to join us and smash some people. That'd be really cool. Yeah, we'd go pretty hard. I really like it. I likened it to, here we go again. You're gonna Total have... Annihilation. Yeah, it's very much like Total Annihilation where it's not, it is a real-time strategy game, but you have a, a powerful commander who is responsible for all the building and um, coordinating your offense. So that it's got a really cool feel of, yeah, Total yeah, Annihilation yeah. to it. Do you know what I, I'm really likening it to? What? And that's a MOBA. I'm probably going to get shot down here for what I'm going to say, but you have your very powerful leader who yeah. is basically your character like you've got in a MOBA. It's basically a tower, tower defense in that you're going through and you're trying to, to beat out the, the other team's towers, yeah. if you will to then progress, but instead of destroying the tower, you take over the tower, which means that you're, you're forcing each other backwards and forward until you've got enough to do a final push on your main hub. It's like the MOBA in the fact that you have your minions and stuff, but it's up to you to spawn your own minions. So yeah, yeah. I think that it's taking the MOBA to an extended level, and I, I get a real big uh, MOBA feel from it. But do you know do you know what I most dislike <clears throat> about MOBAs? It's the interaction with people. No, we'll take the look <laughs> yeah, I guess that is the, the thing that I hate most, but take that with that aside, the thing yeah. that I don't like is that you're not you don't control your character. You click where you want them to go. Yeah. And I, yeah. I I don't really like that. This game fixes that because you've got a character that you can control with that commander that Red's talking about. So you can fly around, do your attacking, land on the ground and run around like a robot and attack. 
that's that's what I really like about it because you're not fully just clicking and waiting for them to do what you want them to do. Yeah. Also, I like it in it as well is the the quick transition from ground to to flight, which is upgradable. Yeah, and it's it's just really good that like I was just playing against the like the tutorial thing. I think I'm up to like the the last tutorial thing on it because I kept on going back and restarting things because I wanted to get the three stars in it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you're going through and you'll quickly you shoot at the person and they drop down to the ground. So you drop down on the ground as well and start shooting at them, and then you'd be up in the air and you'd you'd kind of go down in your, your health bar. So you, you're trying to pull them towards your base so that you can heal yourself while still attacking them at the same time. And, oh, it was, it's really good. Really that, good. That's the challenges, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I've done a couple of three stars, but I'm not a completionist, so I don't really care. <laughs> oh, I just stupid stars. little things like we sit there and you go, next star unlocks at 25 seconds, and you've just done it in 26, and you're going, oh, yeah, I think I can do that. Yeah. But, yeah. It was uh, the challenge point. Angry Bird was, style. Was good. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah, we had a little 1v1 last night, didn't we? A couple. Cup. Oh, that's right. The bomber, the melee dude. Oh yeah, I did it first with the stealth bomber and realised that, that when he's a robot, he just does melee. He doesn't like shoot. He doesn't shoot. Like, oh, this is horrible. Yeah. So I changed that for the next game. Didn't really make a difference though. Got annihilated in both of them. <laughs> you could say I had total annihilation. <laughs> that's what I was going for. Mm. <laughs> Smashed. But yeah, so that's pretty much my week. It's consisting of just a couple of, a couple of games this week. But yeah, as I said, a lot of time on Battlefield and Fallout New Vegas. Cool then, uh, Sean. Uh, big one. This, as like I said, apart from the the Air Mech, which I, I started playing yesterday, was a lot of time's been spent on Tropico Five this week. Yep. So really enjoying it. It's it's a good. I wouldn't say that it's a, a turn your your brain off kind of game, but it, it's a very I can sit, sit down and I just get lost in it. Yeah. And I get thing. lost can, in the, the time that I'm playing it. Yeah, you can spend and, ages playing it without really stressing too much. Yeah. And uh, very true, You, I read your uh, blog post that you did on it. It's so hard to keep these people happy. You have unlimited money. You have unlimited technology. And like you can start unlimited money in the modern era and it is still near on impossible to, I know. to get I, some of them happy. So, I give them so, unlimited beer and hookers, and I can manage sixty percent happiness. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> now you just need to put a like a couple of cathedrals in there to keep the rest of them happy. Oh, you know what? I forgot to install the TVs that run continuous runs of Desperate Housewives. <laughs> it's the women that are pissed off at me. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Need, you just need to change your constitution so only the men can vote then. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it should be a thing. That's not a sexist thing because it is an actual choice in the game. So yes, that's right. Uh, the other one is that I, I played was uh, Race the Sun, which was the the PS Plus game this month. I, I feel that uh, PlayStation is mocking us every month by uh, releasing one of these free games, which is just designed to make you rage. It's it's all a conspiracy to to get them to sell more controllers for their consoles, I think. Yeah, like Rogue Legacy and yeah. what's that other stuff. Rogue game? Legacy, Ollie Ollie, Race the Sun. Oh, that one um, that has the co-op now. Mercenary Kings. Yeah, Mercenary Kings. Mercenary Kings, yeah. yeah. You can have all them back. Just uh, games to make you rage. So, yeah, it's it's great concept behind it, but still it's just no... <laughs> It's one of those, you put it on for 10 minutes and you, you get the shits very quickly and, and turn it off. So Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. I've uh, had a bit more time with my uh, headset this week, so it's going very well. I, I highly recommend the, the uh, 500p, the Stealth 500p for PlayStations. So the sounds crisp. Tur- Turtle Beach, right? Yeah, Turtle Beach, yep. Yeah. And it... It works great, the the clarity and all that kind of stuff, especially when you're in parties and things like that there. There's yeah, no annoying noises and hisses like um, 
Yeah, well, the previous headset, one so. that you had was the PS3 headset, which yeah. which works fine with a PS3, but it's, what it does, uh, you obviously wouldn't know because you're on the other end of it, but what it does is, you know how, like, with, say, a push-to-talk radio, you know when you can hear yep. when somebody presses the button, you can hear it sort of click on? Yeah, that, that feedback. It's it's not feedback to the point of like like an old school radio. It's but just that slight little click. But yeah. the thing is, it doesn't do it, it. It that's the microphone turning on and off automatically when you're talking, right? But the thing is, even when you're not talking, it clicks on and off, on and off, and it does that constantly. Yeah. So even when you're not talking, I can just hear that running. Just yeah, over and over. That's what it was that drove me insane. With the new Turtle Beach headset, it's not there. But I've got to hand it to the to the headset though, man. Your voice sounds super sexy. I oh, know. So if you're trying to woo some <laughs> with the headset, dude, not just in general. Yeah. If you're trying to woo some like internet nerd girlfriend, you got to get one of these headsets because your voice will just sound so like Barry White. Richard Mercer love song dedications sort of love thing. song dedications sounded, on yeah, mix. It's real good. Well, we all know that breaking up is hard to do. Good head coming on to me. No, I'm not. <laughs> not even close. I will. <laughs> red, there's, but there's no, there's no worry about red coming on to you. There's just no, never mind. Yeah, no, I'm no, no going there. I've got to find it to aim it. <laughs> what else, Sean? That's it. That's it. All right, my week. My week is pretty, (laughs) uh, pretty smooth and simple. Like um, red. I don't know what direction I'm going with. Video games. Air Mech Arena. Arena. (laughs) I can't stop thinking about Mech Arena when I say it. Who's fault was that? Red. (laughs) Red. I never even thought of that. Now that you've said that, that's all that's going to pop into my mind. <laughs> Air Macarena. Air Macarena. <laughs> but the funny thing is, in Air Macarena. <laughs> when you, yeah, I'm going to say it real fast from now on. When you leave your character standing there. Um, and not using your control, he does start dancing. He dances. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen that actually. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Bloody hell! Guess what I chucked in uh, this week? Oh, Destiny. I guess I know. <laughs> Destiny. What? What do you think I was going to say? Well, uh, Last of Us. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did that. You know, I'll talk about that in a minute. Destiny. I put Destiny in this week. Shame. I chucked the disc in. I did my 600 kilobyte update. I went to orbit, went straight into the one of the daily missions or whatever. Got halfway through it, turned it off. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> oh, I was just I went into the daily mission and went, "Oh, I've done this mission a million times. What am I I it's I've just done it to death. So, hopefully the new DLC Breathes a bit of life into it because God, it was boring. So anyway, I turned it off. Today I put in the crew. Oh, cool! Uh, I thought I'm starved for games at the moment because I finished most of the shit that I've got. I thought oh, I haven't really given the crew a fair go. I'll chuck it in. I put it in. It had a, I think it was might have been one or two gig update. Actually, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't even that big. No, it was about 800 meg. And I thought, oh. It's only for online stuff. I'll just play offline for a bit until the, the download's complete. Now, can't do it. Went in and it said, popped up a little notification saying, uh, you know, it needs to be updated or you can play without doing the update and do it later. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And then it just was in like an infinite loop and just came back around saying, you've got to do the update. Skip. Okay. Press options. Done. Oh, you got to do the update. So it was just an infinite loop. So I thought, okay, maybe you can't play this game offline or without the update or whatever. So fair enough. I went and uh, played something else while it did the downloaded the update. I got the update, installed it, went into it, couldn't connect to the servers. <laughs> couldn't Shit. play the game at all. Now, now surely 
there's a sim- single player aspect to it where you're doing the missions. You don't have to have all the online stuff, I assume. But it could, I couldn't get in. Wouldn't connect to the servers and just wouldn't let me play it. So I took the disc out, put it back in the cover, and put it back in the cupboard. That's when I pulled out The Last of Us. <laughs> Meanwhile, across a drive club. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> living it up. Anyway, at least Drive Club supposedly loads up. But anyway, I pulled out The the Last of Us. The reason why I haven't platinumed The Last of Us Remastered is because I decided I had this grand idea that I would play through on Grounded, which I did, and I got probably around 50% of the way through the game, but then got to a part where it was just really hard, just so hard I was just constantly dying. It's the section in the game where there's the sniper up in the building, and you've got to walk through, kill everyone, get up and fight the sniper. Then you shoot, you use the sniper rifle to shoot all the guys down the bottom and protect Ellie and all that. Well, I played it today and I realized that I can change the difficulty back down to Survivor. Survivor being the only trophy, like Grounded's not part of the Platinum. So you don't, you don't have to finish it on that. So I thought, I want to get the Platinum, so I'll drop it down to Survivor and play the rest of the game like that. I was playing it today, and man, after playing Grounded, Survivor is piss easy for me. I'm cruising through it without really much drama. Yeah, the odd, odd death here and there, but um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it again. It's actually quite fun. And my mum was over today, and she watched me play it. She was, she, I think she loved it. I don't think she wanted to admit it, but she was keen and didn't want to go, and she wanted to keep watching me play it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, but yeah, so I played that, and that's it, man. I don't, I don't really put a lot. I've been working this week, so I've had quite a few early nights and busy days. So that's about it for me. Awesome. Can I bring up just a quick topic before we move on to the news? And if you want, I want to get your guys' opinions because uh, this game of the year edition or complete editions that we're starting to see filter onto the. Uh, current-gen consoles, uh, the three that I absolutely know are confirmed is uh, Far Cry 4, Complete Edition, uh, Shadow of Mordor, Game of the Year Edition, and Sniper Elite 3, Complete Edition. Now, these are re-released games at full price, obviously, with their DLC about 12 months after release. What do you reckon? What About what? About, about, about these games being redone so soon. Well, what, what re- remarketed. Is... It's always been a, a well, they did it with a, a lot of things like the the Dead Island come out with a game of the year, Batman's all came out with a game of the year, I think. And yeah, yeah. I think it's just the 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 way that they do it, you know. Like, you know what? I've I've never been a one to to just go out and and buy one, but I think that Dead Island was was maybe one that I picked up for like twenty dollars in one of the sales. Yep. And yeah, that's a different story, though, is that as long as they're cheap. Yeah, yeah. like I'll pick them up in a sale or something if I haven't had the game, you know. But for things like Far Cry 4, you know, like if you didn't buy that when it first released, I don't see, well, uh-huh. you know, it, it's, it's, but it is good in, an, in another way for the, the people which are just getting into the market now. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, they're not really marketing it to us because we yeah. played it first time round. It's it's a good marketing tool for those that are just getting into the console because it, it's still very early in the, the new generation of consoles, be it PS4 and Xbox One. And if you buy one today and you see that there's a, a Game of the Year edition, number one, you're going to go, well, that got, that's a Game of the Year edition? That must be a good game. Oh, and it comes with everything. Yeah, all right, yeah. I'll, I'll pick that up. Because, like, I, I've, I've had three Game of the Year edition games before, and that was uh, Skyrim, Fallout, and Borderlands 1. And, you know, that the extra content warranted a, a, a sort of like a Game of the Year title, if you know what I mean. Like, there was... I don't know. Not saying that these games don't warrant it. I just wonder... I just, just I've noticed it over, especially the last week, Sniper Elite 3 has been advertised for a little bit longer than these other two. But it's it's seeming seemingly quick. They're hitting the market pretty quickly now, and I just um because I remember like PS One and PS Two when that sold um when a certain game sold an X amount of uh, copies, it went platinum or something yep, like that, and it was right. never gonna never over thirty dollars or something. Yeah, that that I get and that I appreciate. So, oh, we sold ten millions of these, so bang, here's our game of the year edition. 
you know, pick it up for $50 sort of thing. But these are these are going full retail, and I just, like, nothing against the publishers or the developers or anything like that. I think they're just having a second dip at the, the, um, the pie trying to get the extra for the DLC. Mm. Because the oh. DLC's, like, what, what are we going to get? A Watch Dogs game of the year with bad blood. <laughs> but also in, in what you're saying, I... I think that, well, when you you say like Far Cry 4 Complete Edition, Mm. that only came out in November. Yeah. You know, I I think it is quite a short turnaround to be able to start pumping out a Game of the Year edition. Yeah, sure, maybe maybe the Platinums and Platinum Editions and all that kind of stuff, which had all the DLC in that there, that you you released a year after they'd come out or once they'd hit a certain amount of numbers. Yeah. Yeah, at least where the season pass expired. But is it yeah. is it a, is it a problem for us? No, no, I I, I I didn't want to come into it perceiving it to be a problem. I just wanted to ask your opinion. Is it too soon? But what what I'm getting at is, who cares if it is too soon? Okay. Does it does it make like are you annoyed because you could have waited a short amount of months and got the whole lot? Is that where it is a negative for for us or what? I don't know. I don't get it. Well, I got uh, Shadow of Mordor with the season pass uh, on sale for $60. Yeah. Yeah. The Game of the Year edition, which is coming out, which has all the DLC and all that kind of stuff, is going to be more expensive than that. Well, yeah, that was a sale. Yeah. But um, you know what? I I wouldn't have bought Shadow of Mordor if it was uh, the $130 or something on release. Mm. But... You know what? If it came out as a game of the year edition and it was fifty dollars, I'll go. You know what? Yeah, I might buy that. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> yeah, just no, when it's... it comes to that stuff, it doesn't. Uh, I don't really care. Whatever. Get another piece of the pie. Like yeah, well, I mean, I very doubt that people are buying this game twice for it. They just buy the DLC for it if they really wanted it. But it's it's for new buyers, new new people into the the area, people that didn't get it first time round. First up in the news, Assassin's Creed Syndicate revealed. You guys have obviously heard about this one. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys interested? Yes. <laughs> Suck a glutton for punishment. I'll wait for the game of the year edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, I don't know if Unity's poor experiences sort of hurt my spirits with it. Or if I've just had enough of Assassin's Creed. Oh, that's a good yeah. call. It's, um, it's getting a bit that way, I think. Uh, it seems like the last few seem to just have one... It, it seems to be, like, mashing all together with, like, around the same period, if that makes sense. And it yeah. doesn't have to really be progressing anywhere. I'm just, I'm just getting bored of it. Like I used to be so pumped for like the Ezio uh, versions of, of Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. I'm really flat with it now. I'm pff, whatever. Anyway, I've got some information on it. So see if any of this interests you. The setting is going to be London, London, 1868. Not, not 1886. Yeah, not to be confused with 1886. <laughs> it's a, a completely <laughs> other. Another video game franchise, which is 75 years after the setting that uh, Unity used. So we're, we moved on a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit more technologically advanced and blah, blah, blah. There's going to be two playable characters. But don't be confused into thinking that that's for co-op because it's not. The twin siblings that are playable are Jacob and Evie Fry. Some missions in the game are going to be specific to one character while some are with the other. And when you're free roaming around London, you'll have the choice of who you want to be. And apparently that both characters are going to be leveling up separately. You've got to do levels on both. And uh, they're going to have very different styles. Uh, So uh, male and female. So there's going to be a female protagonist in the main single player story, which is something new. 
Uh, you, Jacob and Evie are both uh, the leaders of a gang, and the gang's called the Rooks. And basically, the overarching story is going to be, you know, the, the Rooks are going to be influencing people and, and uh, encouraging people to join them to fight the, no doubt, the Templars or whatever. So that's how that's going to work. The game is only going to be single player. There is no multiplayer whatsoever. So no multiplayer, no co-op, no nothing. Ooh, big call. Yeah, big call. Now, they claim that they're doing this because they want to take the Assassin's Creed games back to its roots. Now, it, it, originally it was just a multi, uh, just a single player game. But at the same time, it was a game that, um, that worked as well. Yeah, I was just about to say, if it's online constantly, it's more to fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, it, it probably will play a little bit better, and they only need to focus on on getting single player right, which is probably something they really need to do. Uh, but at the same time, if they're giving us more of what we had already, it's for me personally, it's just going to be a little bit boring. I don't know. Maybe it might be good. I will. I will definitely play this. I won't pass it. I'm not that cranky at the Assassin's Creed series. I do definitely want to play it. It looks good. There's gameplay footage at the moment that's available. It's up on Facebook. Aussie Gamers Express Facebook page you can look at. They've added a couple of new things that they've announced as well, such as the grappling hook. So they've borrowed that from Warner Brothers. Uh, good old Batman's grappling hook is available where you can shoot it across and slide from it. There's going to be horse-drawn carriages as well. Questions have been asked of whether or not the, the carriages are going to draw away from people doing the what the game's meant to be, you know, the parkouring across buildings and all that. Apparently not, but it's supposed to aid with um, speed of getting around the place. But I don't, I don't know. It, I mean, you get into a horse-drawn cart, really, and you can hide in it. That's probably one of the bonuses you can pull over and hide if you're being chased or whatever. Could be a way of doing, like, your, say, your fast travel and that around your city as well. What do you mean? Well, don't you, like, can't you fast travel in between the points? Viewpoints, yeah. Viewpoints? Uh, that's, no, this is, this isn't for that. Oh, okay. It's this just is a... just like a car in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> Except you got to whip me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, actually, I don't know if you've got to steal it or if you own one or if they just, you can hire them. I don't know how it works or if they're like taxis, but I don't know. That's so 1860s. Yeah, it's <laughs> very 1860s. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. It's it is what it is. When when was Jack the Ripper? Do you reckon we'll see Jack the Ripper? Is that in that time? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, because yeah. they they did say that we will see iconic figures from history. So I'm thinking maybe a bit of Jack the Ripper solving that could be cool. That'll be cool. Yeah, well, oh, well, eighteen. <laughs> Sorry, eighteen eighty eight was Whitechapel. Yeah when he did the murders. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we so might maybe we might meet him fun. young. Yes. Or, 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 or we'll just meet him next year in the order, the order, in, the order 1867. <laughs> 1887. 1887, I, got, I know yeah, what you're talking about. It'll be the year before. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. That's all I've got on it. We'll um, cover it more as they release more, but uh, that's about all that we know for now. Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition has a release date for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, and it will be June the 24th. Well, that's and, soon. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty cool. And they're starting to release, if, especially if you've liked their page on Facebook and whatnot, you, the, the screenshots and a few videos and different trailers are coming out for it now. And it actually looks really, really good. Is that much different to Devil May Cry? Gameplay wise? No. Gameplay wise, no. No, okay. No, no uh, so, as you can imagine, 1080p, 60 frames a second, uh, three new playable characters as opposed to its original release. They're, all the characters were in the game, but they're now going to be playable, being Virgil, Virgil Lady, and Trish. Uh, it comes in at US $25, but I'm looking at the PlayStation Store right now and we can pre order it for $38. Uh, so it is slightly cheaper than the DMC reboot, remaster. It's an older game, though, isn't it? It is an older game, but do you know what's funny? 
it's bigger. <laughs> it's twenty point six gig. I oh, think right. um, Devil May Cry. Oh no, then maybe that was just the first part, the first part of the download for Devil May Cry, and then it extended out bigger. But uh, from from what it looks like, it, it looks it looks pretty pretty sh- schmick, and I'm looking forward to having a go at it because you don't play as um, Dante, you play as Nero. So a very similar backstory there, but not to give it away. So it's your... you've played four. Yeah, mate. Yeah. For how, sure. How's this going to work with timelines? Right, they've released DMC. We've all mm-hmm. played. Let's just you know, perfect world. We've all played Devil May Cry the reboot. Yep. Now going to four. Yep. How, how confused am I going to be? Plenty. <laughs> because <laughs> there's no one, two, and three. Well, essentially, I've played one, right? Yeah, well, what you what you've got from um, DMC is a whole is three games worth of history and backstory and angst and pain and Why confusion, are you that? all smooshed into one game. Right. And then you got four. Oh, so one... four should just sort of take on kind of I'd imagine from DMC. Yeah, it, it will because you you introduced. Uh, to Nero, the character you play, and you can tell that he's of the same vein as Dante because actually in your tutorial level on Devil May Cry 4, you fight Dante. Oh. So, so that's kind of cool. You play DMC, you banish the evil there, so you got to grasp the good concept of who Dante is. Now, this is a story, this is a Devil May Cry story told from the perspective of Nero. So you're probably not really losing too much, but you've just got a real condensed um, serving of what Devil May Cry, the Devil May Cry lore and world is with the reboot. So right. So what you'll, I've played you'll already, really enjoy it. Yeah. So what I've played already sort of will, in a real nutshell, covered one, two, and three. If, law, law wise, yes. Yeah, not necessarily everything that happened in the original ones, but covered the story ish. Yep, world. Sets, sets, sets a tone for, for your Nero story on Devil May Cry. That's that's why I think it was really smart. They bought four out, because like, they could have done a special edition of three or four, considering they're both PS3 releases. Um, one and two would have been a bit of a stretch coming from the, the PS1 and two. But, um, yeah, so you're going to, as I said, a, a new main protagonist, still including Dante. The law's all the same. So for us current-gen players and um, people that just jumped onto the bandwagon that is the Devil May Cry series with the reboot a few months ago, this is going to follow straight on. It's going to feel the same because it looks, from what I can tell, it looks just as good. It's presented just as well as uh, DMC. Yeah, I'll be keen. I'll play it for sure. Oh, yeah, likewise. Going to have a crack at the first level, Sean? (laughs) I'll give it a go. (laughs) Leave him alone, really? Yeah, yeah. I know. Such an ass. That's all I've got to say about that. Lego Dimensions has uh, been uh, leaked out little uh, things for a couple of new packs coming to the, the Dimensions this year. So uh, you'll be pretty excited for a couple of them, Luke. There's yep. a a Portal 2 level pack. All right. Which comes yeah. with a turret, companion cube, and shell. Mm-hmm. There's a Doctor Who level pack with a TARDIS, the Doctor, and a robotic canine. And the Jurassic World team pack with four iconic figures from the movie, including Chris Pratt's Owen. What so, about Simpsons? There is a Simpsons one as well. There is, yes. Yes. Didn't we, didn't so, we predict that, or were we discussing that? I think we were, yeah. So they've they've actually yep. got other ones that have been reported were like DC, Lord of the Rings, Lego Movie, Wizard of Oz, uh, Ninjago, and Back to the Future. So uh, yeah, they they've got some pretty cool packs coming out with it. So. I, I remember, I think I did the uh, the calculations, and this wasn't with all of those new packs that have been leaked, but just the ones that we knew of. If you wanted them all, it was going to cost around five hundred and eighty odd dollars. Yeah. So clearly, you're just going to need to buy the ones that you love, and don't worry about collecting them all, unless you're Lachlan Murdoch. 
Well, you no, got yes. three kidneys. That's not his <laughs> name. What's his name? Lachlan. Who am I thinking of? Huh? Who's that Lachlan guy that's rich? Packer. Packer. No, no that's not yeah. Lachlan, is it? No, I think it's Lachlan Murdoch. I think I was right the first yeah. time. Packer is James. Jamie. James. James Packer. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Unless you're them. <laughs> Imagine they don't play video Unless games. Unless you're really rich. <laughs> what I was getting at. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it, yeah. So, Lego Dimensions, new yeah, stuff. Take out, out. take out another mortgage. Coming out in September. Is it gay? What? Gay. No, I said take out another mortgage and then you can play it. Yeah, but then Sean said it's coming out. Oh, ring. Oh, yes, out of the closet. Oh, right out God. of there. I can just like that comment about you being spacey. I'll call you Kevin. I don't care. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up in news, I've got Guitar, Guitar Hero Live Fuck. Live Fuck? That'll oh, sell. Oh All right, next up in the news, I've got Guitar Hero Live Song List. I've got a massive one. This is uh, apparently everything that's been announced to date the bands and their songs that are going to be on there. So it's a little bit more than what we've had so far. Alt J. What's that? What is it a hotkey? Should I, I was press gonna it? say, what happens if you do that? Hang on, I'm on here. I'm, I'm just going to highlight this. Press Alt J. No, it doesn't do anything. Just a gay music band coming across my screen. I don't know who they are, but Alt J with the song Left Hand Free. <laughs> <laughs> what Feat- are you t- featuring Thorncliffe. <laughs> What's the right hand doing? Oh dear, that's funny. Uh, the next one. Because when I do it, I you need, need both. both hands. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, but one's to hold the shelf up. I was going to say <laughs> one hand to hold the pole and the other one to stick your finger up your ass to pop it out. <laughs> the next one Alter Bridge, Cry of Achilles. Heard of them? Yes. Yeah. Miles Are they good? Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, no, the, lead, the lead singer Miles Kennedy is the one that uh, sings with Slash. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Black Keys, Gold on the Ceiling. Uh, Lonely Boy would have been better. Yeah, okay. but Gold on the Ceiling, that's their biggest single. Uh, mm-hmm. Black Veil Brides, In the End. <laughs> There's all these. Uh, Lincoln Park. Okay. Lincoln Park, yeah. Featuring Chester. Yeah. <laughs> what? Is it? No, same. Just making a joke. Yeah. Uh, Hilarious. Blitz Kids. (laughs) Blitz Kids have got the song song Sometimes. Never heard of it. Broken Bells. Leave It Alone. It's all these masturbation and anal (laughs) things. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Ed Sheeran. uh, Sing. (laughs) It's pretty gay. (laughs) (laughs) Fallout Boy. My songs know what you did in the dark. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> last summer yeah yeah well that's what I thought it was going to say anyway Gary Clark Jr don't owe you a thang <sighs> <sighs> they're getting better trust me Green Day Nuclear Family Judas Priest Breaking the Law Six song yeah Breaking the Law Breaking the Law The Dang. Killers When You Were Young The Lumineers Ho Hey My Chemical Romance Na 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 Pantera Cowboys yeah. from Hell yeah, boy. Nice. Pierce the Veil, King for a Day, featuring Kellen Quinn. The Pretty Reckless, Going to Hell, Rage Against the Machine, Gorilla Radio. Red Hot Chili Peppers with Higher Ground. That's that cover from um, Stevie Wonder, isn't it? Yeah. Awesome. I like that song. The Rolling Stones, Painted Black. Remember the intro? Yeah, Skrillex yeah, with Bangarang. We knew about that one. Sleigh Bells, Bitter Rivals, The War on Drugs. Under pre- under the pressure. Under the pressure. <laughs> ice, ice, babe. Oh. That's not it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Under the freezer. Bowie, Bowie fans had sacrificed you for that. Yeah. I think we've got a uh, another one. Have we? Yes. What do you got? I've chopped suey by System of a Down. Me too. I did read that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wake up! So, <laughs> did you did well, you see that's... the goat on yeah. Facebook? <laughs> 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 wake up! Wake up! <laughs>
I swear there's a part in that song where he goes, I just masturbated with the shaker. <laughs> Would fit in with all the other songs. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's... <laughs> oh, that's... This is what happens when you get three sexually frustrated men on live recording. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's play too many video games. All right, that's it for this one. Who's got the next news? Ubisoft has come out today and... No, uh... stop, stop, stop. Don't go breaking my heart. <laughs> Don't go breaking looks hard. No? <laughs> Something tells me you're going to do it anyway. Keep going. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I'll cut st- like a, a band-aid. I'll rip it straight off. The division has been delayed till next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right, and, as long as it's not broken. And, and of all things to release it on, they uh, revealed it with their recent financial report. We made this much money, by the way, the way game that was going to make us the most money this year is now next year. <laughs> or more so, it's going to be like, uh, we made this much money, we made budget, so we don't have to release this one, so we'll release it next year and make sure we make budget with this game next year. Yeah, well, they got a lot of money. I've read somewhere that uh, some of the people from Assassin's Creed have moved over to the uh, division to help with the multiplayer because uh, the Assassin's Creed won't be using multiplayer this year. They've um, like reallocated some of their resources over to to help get it. Makes sense. Yeah, I was get it going. So because yeah. they've got the Rainbow Siege, Rainbow Six, the Siege also. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, the is that this year? No, oh, unconfirmed. Uh, I want that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. As long as it's not repetitive. Yeah, I think the division, division as well. That's been been teased since like 2012. So they keep on pushing it back, pushing it back. So hopefully they get it right. And... I don't know. I was going to say most games that are delayed like that come out really good, but then Unity was delayed. Yeah, it was too. And that's Ubisoft not... too. I'm so scared. Please, not long, not long enough. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. But, oh, but they had a they got a specific window though because their games come out every year. But this isn't a yearly release, so fingers crossed nah. it works well. Well, it, it's uncharted territory almost with games like this, and they've gone on to explain that in a lot bigger words. But I'll use my own. Other than the likes of say Destiny, you don't have many big MMOs on the consoles at the moment, and. Um, yeah, so it's real, very real uncharted territory for it. So they've got they've had the alpha, the beta's due soon, and they just want to really knuckle down and get this right. And look, I'm so for that, but it hasn't been pushed back that far. It, we're, we're looking at what is the the fourth quarter of the fiscal year, so that's more oh, January to March. So it'd be in the first quarter of a normal year, if you will. But also something else that has come from it, they've. Uh, rumoured or teased a new AAA IP for the same time of year so we, we might just see the death of bloody <laughs> Assassin's Creed because was it you and I Luke or was it maybe last podcast we were talking about Ubisoft they never bring or they don't want to in the future just bring out a single title with a given IP yeah that, that, that was that what they, one of the I don't know who it was but one of their spokespersons or CEO or something came out and said a couple of years ago that Ubisoft are focusing on franchises. They're not going Franchise. to make a one-off game. If they make a game, they're going to make a series of it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to put it out there now that we'll, we'll get uh, Sam Fisher back next year. Yeah, he's overdue. Yeah. That, and... <laughs> I wet myself for that game. Splinter Cell. Yeah. Yeah. Wet yeah. draws. And just just to finish off on the Ubisoft new uh, news, aside of aside from Just Dance, all of uh, Ubisoft's upcoming titles will only be released now on new gen consoles yeah. or, pl- or platforms. Sorry, I should say because you got the PC. Yeah, all good. I'm happy with that. Yep, me too. Cool, um, Sean. Hey, uh, Goat Simulator Goat Z. Yes. Right. is the new DLC for Goat Simulator and 
basically what it says is this is your story the only aim is to survive and that's about it so zombies in goat seat now are they, <laughs> are they zombie goat goats now. no you're a zombie zombie goat so you're a zombie goat yeah it looks like what it. are you surviving against uh, i don't know good it's research just very yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, it's just a just a, a DLC pack that they've added in, and that's so a skin. You're a zombie, and that's it. Yeah, and <laughs> it looks like there there is <laughs> there's zombie, there, there is, is zombies in the game, which which will attack you and attack other people. So, yeah, human zombies. Yeah, or human goats? zombies. Okay, so you human zombies. Are and you, you are a and, no <laughs> <laughs> human zombies and. You're a, a zombie goat as well, so yeah. <laughs> That's mad. Yeah, you might think it's stupid. Yeah, but I do, it's a yeah. game called fucking Goat Simulator. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say it doesn't take much to add a riveting fucking storyline. Yeah, game called so... goat. yeah fair call. Fair call. Yeah. The name itself is very stupid. All right, well, fuck. If you're a you're a Goat Simulator player, go and grab the Goat Z patch thingy update. Well, oh, come on, they, they, they went as far as uh, putting zombies into, remember, the warehouse simulator? <laughs> oh, really? Yes. There is Was the warehouse there. a zombie? No, they had zombies in there that you could run over with a forklift. See, anything's better with zombies. Yeah. Dragons. Anything's uh, better with zombies, dragons, or dinosaurs. Yes. I think if any of those three were mods to any game... You would have somebody that would like it, that would love it. <laughs> oh, what's a bet? Goat Z was a mod, now being made into a paid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Well, the yeah. game started out as just, just a, a piss take that somebody made a, a video up. But I think they based it off like the uh, mechanics of an old. Like, what was that stupid game that? You hey, like, shot, shot, yourself, <laughs> shot yourself out of uh, cannons and stuff. Oh, Pingu. No, I know the one. Was it on the PS3? Yeah, PS3. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, And you buy those skins. And you, you'd like crash hurt. Um, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. I don't know. Somebody will probably listen to the show and let's know. Uh. Okay. And yeah, so go Z. Lovely. Red, you got more news? I do have one more, and the name of the video game was called Pain. 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 There you go. Simple. Yep. <laughs> All right. The Witcher 3 on Xbox One. Yeah. It is to feature a dynamic resolution. <laughs> what is that? Oh, resol- Oh, it's what? Yeah, so it'll go anywhere from, uh, yeah, 240 to 480. <laughs> 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 no, it's going to have a dynamic resolution where it can, uh, where the game will switch between 900p and 1080p. That's a good idea. Yeah, 1080p cutscenes. Because <laughs> then now we've got dynamic. We, we, well, at least you can sit back and say, well, we've got 1080p on the Xbox One. <laughs> Just put a Blu ray in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not going to be like that on the PS4? No, it's just going to, PS4 will run at 1080p 30 frames. 30 frames. No, we can, no, everyone's failing on this frames per second thing. Yeah, and it's... Look, I'm, I'm all for it. So probably, obviously, on the Xbox One when it's less labouring on its... Uh, on the system, it'll run at 1080. But, yeah, you draw a sword and it'll drop to 720 and level out at 900. <laughs> well, what, would, what would you prefer? 1080p 30? 900p 60? Just for any game, just generic. 1080, 30. 1080, 30? Yeah. Yep. I'd take 960. I love a 60 frame game. Yeah, true. It's one of those things that if you don't have 60 frames, you probably won't miss it. But if you have 60 frames, you're like, oh, geez, this is nice. Yeah. I I played The Last of Us today, so it's fresh in my mind what a 60 frames a second game is like. It's very nice and very smooth. Yeah, it does look very nice but it's like the, the crispness in the resolution though. Uh, yeah I just reckon everything should run at 1080 now it's true high def yeah but I, I don't think there's much of a difference from 900 to 1080 <clears throat> it's just a polish really or a gloss 
Well, yeah. arguably, I reckon if you put 10 people in a room, just anybody, I don't think they'd pick the difference between 900 and 1080. 720 and 1080, yeah. 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 Not 900 and 1080. But anyway, that's maybe I'm just super intelligent. I don't know what that's got to do with anything, but I just wanted to say I might be super intelligent. <laughs> just putting it out there. Yeah, just that's it. Just as a suggestion. Uh, so ukulele has gone up onto Kickstarter. Huh? Have you heard about this game, ukulele? No. No, it's a successor to Banjo Kazooie. Oh, so yes, I have. People put it up as a, a Kickstarter, and I think it was a, like some kind of modest uh, total that they were asking for. So. Uh, the two hundred and seventy thousand dollars, or what they they want it, uh, it has roughly about thirty days left now, and it's got over two million dollars. Oh, <laughs> so these hey, people yeah. really want to see this is coming out. So the interesting thing behind this is it's got a new character in there. You can and uh, snake. no, he's he's a snake, and he he wears shorts, and his name is Trouser. <laughs> oh, that's what you're talking about, trouser snake. Ah. So he is a trouser snake. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he uh, he thinks of himself as the best salesman ever, but with his downbeat appearance in 1980s mobile phone, never life never took off for him. So he's, uh, yeah, snake that wears pants called trouser. Yeah, I reckon he's going to be a shit character. <laughs> It'd just be a cock. Be a cock. <laughs> it's been a cock to everyone. Yes, so uh, that was funny that they've actually put in the article what the Urban Dictionary defines the trouser snake as an elusive animal that comes in many shapes and sizes. The most feared yet desired animal in the animal kingdom and the best word ever used for referring to a penis. <laughs> <laughs> So, said penis. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm going to shock you even more because I'm going to say vagina as well. Hey! That's okay. Ooh. It, it's, that's a proper word too. Don't have to beep it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're obviously not going to get put on the radio in Target now. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you wanted to um, make sure we didn't get put on the radio in Target, I could just do this. And just say that I bashed my wife. <laughs> that, that was my hand. I didn't actually bash my wife. Just, just for the record, all right? <laughs> hey, Rach, are you all right? <laughs> she, said, she said yes. Couldn't hear her because she's bound and tied. But that's all bound and going. <laughs> yeah, bound and going. <laughs> Waiting for it. All right, is that all our news or do you have a sneaky one, Red? No, that's all our news. Got it all? All right, well, look, before yeah. we go through the news, we're going to have to uh, work out a code word. Yes. They should get people listening. What are we going to have for the code word? Ah. Uh, <laughs> that's to be a word. <laughs> Let me have a quick look. What are you looking at? Trousers snakes. <laughs> Trousers snakes. <laughs> what did they use for the cash cow this morning on... <laughs> <laughs> Steve, where it is popcorn. <laughs> is it called Sunrise Where You Are, or do they call it something else? <laughs> Still dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. That's what it's called. Oh, 2.9 degrees this morning at 7 o'clock. Yeah, love to live where you live. Mm-hmm. What, are you, what are you looking at, Sean? Oh, I was just uh, seeing if I could find a cool word to have something to do with it, but... Um, yeah. Maybe just use the word Sauron. How do you spell Sauron? S-A-U-R-O-N. Okay, so the special code word is Sauron. S-A-U-R-O-N? Yep. Okay, that's the special code word. All right, let's go into What's That Sound? I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. All right, last week we had Red's What's That Sound, and it was... The Mystery Box from Black Ops Zombies. Is that from... I don't know if I asked. Was that Black Ops? The one and two. Oh, both of them. Oh, yeah, I was going to say which Black Ops. Yeah, one and two. One and two was the same, was it? 
Yeah, mate. Oh, there you go. All right, I didn't get that. I don't think anybody did, but uh, too hard. We have one successful entrance so far oh, today. Did we? You mean? Who, who? Who's that? Cameron Lavender. Well done, Alpha. Cameron Lavender. Buddy and culinary expert that we have listening to our show. Do you think he would play Pokemon and feel privileged because they named a town after him? Lavender Town? Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) I I really like to get to know a few of these blokes because with the shout out thing, you know, (laughs) I'm I'm half. These are are good blokes. All right, we're going to get this week's What's That Sound, don't we? You mean? All right, let's have a listen to this one. I don't know what this one is either because this this was supplied by Red as well. So let's have a listen. I know what that is. I reckon I had that sound effect on one of those sound-making key rings that I had back in the 90s. That's very fitting. Marie. Um, I that's... think it's Space Invaders. Space Invaders? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sun Man. What'd you say? Sun Man? Yeah, opposite to oh. Ray. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no, but... Luke gets a shot first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's listen to it again. Oh, just that's what it reminded me of those bloody key rings. It would have been on American Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Oh yeah, keep going. What the fuck's that game where you fucking shoot the shit coming down in the ground? Uh, yeah, down to the. That'd be the game. What is it? Yeah, boy. Is that what it's called? Yeah, man. Yes. <laughs> was that what you were going to say, Sean, next? I was... No. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, fuck <laughs> it. Yeah, of course I was. Yeah. Yeah, that's that one where there's lots of missiles. They're just lines Yeah. coming down, and you you put the cursor over the top of it with the joystick, and you've got to hit the button, and it you got to blow up the head of the missile, otherwise... Yes, you got to do it early, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to do it really early, and, oh, that was a pain in the ass, that game. And in the arcade, they had the spherical ball that you used as your mouse. I, I only ever tried that for the first time at that... Um, museum? Yeah, that museum thing that Sean and I went oh, to. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they had the ball one there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, otherwise, uh, my brother, uh, Reprimir's dad, he actually had an Atari 2600, and he had that game. But yeah, that sound effect, uh, that mostly I, it remind, reminds me of those key rings that you had. We used to press it and it would make that sound for whatever stupid reason, but it was cool. Wow, I got a what's that sound. That's I think that's impressive for me. Cool, man. And just to let you know, there's an Easter egg on the YouTube website where you actually do a certain thing and you can play Missile Command trying to save the video from being shot. Oh, really? Yeah, man. How do you do it? Uh, I think it's click outside the square and press F8. Hang on a second. YouTube missile command Easter egg. So is it for any video or? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm giving this a go. Uh, So go to YouTube, um, pick any video and pause it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, click outside the video. Yeah. And type 1980. 1980. Wait, click outside the video is in outside the window or? Yeah, yeah, on the yeah. Just so go to your white part. I feel like an idiot. Nothing's happening. Are you are you trolling me? No, absolutely not. Is that so, Chrome or Explorer? You're not doing an ad, are you? No, no, it's in the. Vi- I don't think so. No, mm-hmm. it's in the video. Hang on one second. I'm just letting the ad skip by real quickly. This is really inconvenient. Love ads on YouTube. So pause. Click to the left of the window. 1980. Hey, it's not working. It used to. Click outside the window pane and type 1980. Yeah, that's what I used to always do. Oh, that's bad. Now I look like a dumbass. <laughs> 1980. Why are we typing? How do we type 1980 into nothing? Oh, I've totally balls this up, haven't I? I don't know. Do I have to press something else? No. I'm being trolled. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. All right, let's let's uh, let's go into not-so-frequently-asked questions. 
Right, uh, this week, I never announced it at the start of the show, but I've got a really exciting one. I've got some really cool stuff from this game. Mortal Kombat is the topic, and I've got some not-so-frequently-asked questions about it. I've got a couple here I'll go through, but uh, did you know that Mortal Kombat was created by four people in ten months? Yes. Uh, John Tobias, Ed Boone, and I don't know the other two ones. John Vogel and Dan Forden. Yeah, four people, ten months to make the game. That was really cool. Did you know that Big Trouble in Little China was a huge inspiration? For Raiden? Yes, also a couple other characters, but yeah, Raiden specifically because of the uh, the three storms, I think they were called. Those three yep. guys with those big hats and they're all electrical and stuff. Yeah, so he was modelled off them. But Shang Tsung was also modelled off after oh, the bad yeah. guy Lo Pan. Yeah. So there you go. So good inspiration from Big Trouble in Little China. The reason why they, they took inspiration from that is because the setting was oh so familiar where it was like the modern setting with all those sort of gods and sort yep. of stuff, which is kind of like what Mortal Kombat's like. So that's that's where that came from. Here's another one. Only one character was not portrayed by a real live actor. Can you guess which one? From the original uh, game. This is the original one we're talking about. Uh, I'm guessing it'll be uh, Sub-Zero because... It was a copy? No. No. Red, do you want to have a guess? Or do you just want oh, there's, not, there's not many to pick from. Kano? Kano, no. The oh. only character in the game that wasn't portrayed by a real live actor was Goro. Goro, yeah. Oh, duh. Probably because real people don't have four arms and aren't 80,000 feet tall. But anyway, yeah, so he was just, I guess they just uh, keyframed it all in, all the animations. Whereas the other characters, they actually had a live actor they filmed and put them into the game. So that's how that worked. Uh, the home versions, a few people might know this, specifically from our vintage that actually played them back in the day when, when Mortal Kombat was brand new. But uh, the, the home versions were different. Nintendo swapped all the blood for sweat, while Sega had all of the gore, as long as you had the blood code. Yep. Yes. Now, I've been known to quote the blood code on this podcast before do either of you know the blood code not off the top of my head not off the top no the blood code was aba cabb and that was on the uh, sega mega drive but what was the mega drive called in america genesis the genesis that's correct now get this there was also a nod to phil collins now, <laughs> Phil Collins was in a band. Yeah, called Genesis. Called Genesis. And they had an album called Abacab. Ah, oh, ring it. A B A C A B. Ah, uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so the blood code was because of the, the nod to Phil Collins and Genesis. Uh, and, and it was on the Genesis, the Sega Genesis. So that was with all, all that sort of mixed up. How cool is that? Yeah, that is pretty Sick. awesome. Yeah, I had no idea. There's another little, quick little, um, not so frequently asked question that I uh, found in my research, but I actually learnt originally from our good good mate Nico. But Noob Cybot, the character, you guys know where he gets his name, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I do actually. Do you know Sean? Uh, I've heard it somewhere, but I can't remember. What what Cybot backwards? Tobias. Tobias. Yeah, Tobias and, and Boone. Boone. So yeah. Noob backwards yeah. is Boone, Ed Boone, one of the creators of the game, and Cybot backwards is Tobias, also one of the creators. That's John to Tobias and Ed Boone. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Like that. I mean, we a lot of people do know this stuff, but I reckon there'll be a couple of people who go, oh, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. And if there's ever a trivia night, you might get it. Congratulations. You're welcome. Aussie Games Express. We're legends. <laughs> All right, well, that's... Me, yeah. Sorry, mate. That only makes me think of one thing. Hey, you've delivered that like a well-delivered uppercut. Dusty! <laughs> <laughs> nice. But that was a sick one, man. It oh, was I good, wasn't that. it? That's really good I've actually um, just recently done an assessment in which I did a video on uh, Mortal Kombat. Can I add a couple in? 
Oh, if you've got, yeah, if you've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, go ahead. Uh, things, so Sub Zero and Scorpion were two characters uh, that actually ran out of memory on the it's, original yeah. cartridge. So what they did was they just copied them over and just changed the colours. So that's how Sub Zero and Scorpion came to be. Oh, well, they look the same. Look the same. Uh, first game to use mocap, if you will, as you were talking about before, with the digitised human movement. Uh, the whole idea behind Mortal Kombat, which they had, was to uh, use shock value to give them an edge. So they had Street Fighter and all that kind of stuff out at the time. And uh, yeah, they just, you know, things didn't have blood in them. So uh, as you said, with the, the blood code on uh, the, the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, it actually helped to win back in the day that the, the console wars between uh, Sega and Nintendo, Mortal Kombat was, was integral in uh, Sega taking over the console war back then because you could actually get blood in the game. So uh, that was pretty cool. And also that Mortal Kombat was uh, instrumental in when it uh, actually, they had the ESRB started. So in 1994, they had a big thing with Congress in America because uh, Mortal Kombat was deemed to be so violent that they uh, just uh, had all these Senate inquiries and all this kind of bullshit. And then they said, oh, well, we're going to uh, start rating video games. So uh, it was kind of instrumental in that. And then uh, the next year in 1995, uh, they brought out the uh, Australian classification board. So they started doing it in Australia as well. So without Mortal Kombat, we wouldn't have a lot of the things that we have today because there was no rating system in place and it kind of paved the way for all this stuff, which is is pretty awesome. Yeah, and I, I remember the, the day that I brought Mortal Kombat home from the store and put it in and I was blown away. I'm like, these are, these are real people. You don't get yeah. much better graphics than this. This is amazing. So no wonder it kick-started something. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've got it on the, the old Game Boy and I really loved it. And the movie back in the day was pretty cool, Christopher Lambert. So yeah. he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, well that's it for Not So Frequently Asked Questions. Let's move on to Shout! 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 Hit it Alright, um, just a quick one this week. Not that I'm not always quick. But, um, yeah, Just well... Ask your wife. Yeah, I know. Or the neighbour. And pretty... Luke, when he come back from Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always... As, as we touched on earlier, I wouldn't take the piss out of people for their names and everything because not always everyone uses their proper names on uh, Facebook. But, I, firstly, Reuben Reuben. <laughs> <laughs> Reuben Reuben. Oh, no. Very <clears throat> good. Uh, you know what I think of every time I see Ruben Ruben? What? Ruby, Ruby, Ruby! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, he... Uh, Sorry. Chimed in a few times this week. It's good. feel like I'm starting to get to know a few of these blokes. Um, and ladies, of course. Uh, Dano, again. Once again, Stella! <laughs> uh, Tim Stewart, Ben Martin, and uh, this other random bloke um, bloody Pat Clifford <laughs> hi Pat but yeah cheers cheers to those five boys um, keep contributing and you can yeah keep getting your name heard by me <laughs> <laughs> well I guess that's the that's the end of the show it's the end already yeah what oh well now that we're at the end of this week's show <laughs> Please take time to like us on Facebook by searching Aussie Gamers Express in that little toolbar up the top or www.facebook.com slash Aussie Gamers 2012. If you tweet your life away on a daily basis and love using the Twitterverse and hashtags and all that stuff that I really don't understand, at Aussie Gamers 12 is the people that you want to follow over there. Uh, Aussie Gamers TV on twitch.com. TV is where you can find some gaming and raging sessions by us. Not usually me because I'm crap and I'm never on, but Red's there. He like pees his pants and Luke rages and screams at people and 
not really, but it's pretty funny to watch. It's pretty cool. Head on over there, Aussie Gamers TV at twitch.tv, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and iTunes. Search Aussie Gamers Express where you can download this podcast directly to the device of your choice. This is the preferable way that you listen. It'll save your spot and do all the other things. It'll download it every week so you don't have to do anything. And yeah, uh, check out www.aussiegamersexpress.com for all the latest news, reviews, and all that kind of stuff. Feel free to leave a comment save it to your rss feeds and all that kind of stuff uh youtube aussie gamers express again that's where you'll find us um, like subscribe uh comment on videos all that kind of stuff uh pop bombs and dog poo can be directed to p.o box 130 cranebrook new south wales 2749 and luke loves glitter in his letters we've got to stop saying about these pod pipe bombs because in this day and age fucking people are doing that so let's not give them ideas okay <laughs> <laughs> and i've been I watching really forensic files where i watch <laughs> someone make a pipe bomb man damn you with your forensic files i'm up to like episode 20 now oh yeah, you're <laughs> smashing it too you got started we just started talking about it on friday when we went out to dinner and yeah just oh are you halfway through there's 40 episodes yeah pretty cool though but it's good because it gets to the point doesn't it yeah fuck i love netflix man that's pretty cool i recommend it it's and now so we're gonna good. get taxed for yeah, it that tax went through too well how much is the tax gonna be 10 percent. percent. but they'll add friggin 30 percent in overheads and which will bullshit. be a dollar 30 so that's the thing with the with netflix being so cheap i'm i'm not fussed with it I've never seen a, a pay TV or subscription TV service so cheap. Yeah, yeah, that's also Steam, PSN, the Xbox Live. Yeah, that sucks. Every digital source, media source, is now going to be hit with the GST. Yeah, well, no, kind it's of time like, to move like to Canada. For people to go, you know what? I'm just going to VPN everything. Just, yeah, just can just let Deno know that I'm on my way to make. <laughs> Clear a room for me. I'm coming to live in Canada. Yeah? Yeah? Yep. Mm. And do... Un- you, can, you can become a Mountie. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I'll mount your missus. No! <laughs> Black Ops 3's not out yet. Shut <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> oh. Hey, you had half a chance. Yeah, sure, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have a chance. I'll just, I'll just borrow that chloroform that you That's used. Probably why, uh, probably why she doesn't drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Last time she did, she was married yeah. to a thorn clip. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, you're a good bloke, Sean. I know why she married you. Yeah. Huge cock. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we haven't ended the show yet. We probably should. Yeah. I've been Luke One. I've been Thorncliffe. I've been Red. Red.